Great. I think we should be good to get started. So thanks everyone for joining. My name is Quentin Eaton. I'm an account manager here at NewComp. I'm just going to be kicking things off to kind of introduce NewComp, uh, talk a little bit about why we wanted to host this event. Um, and then I'll be passing it over to Jordan, who is one of the data engineers here, who's going to be giving the demonstration. So today what we wanted to do is do a bit of an end-to-end -end story uh, showing the current state of the with grocery analytics uh, and talking a little bit about how um, organizations in the grocery industry or on the supply side can use data to operate more efficiently and better understand uh, customers. So. I don't think that anyone needs a reminder, but uh, 2020 was obviously a very different year that uh, was more so about quickly responding to COVID uh, and being heads down to manage the effects of the pandemic. Um, and while I know there's still a good amount of that going on with 2021 and looking forward, it's we really think it's a time to think more strategically about managing your business for long-term growth. Uh, there's a lot of patterns that we're seeing in the grocery industry, saying everything from healthy eating to sustainable options to convenience foods are all at the top of consumers' minds. And with those things in mind, uh, it's definitely a good time for grocers to start building an analytics roadmap and IT plan that really centers around that uh, customer proposition. And also selecting what technology vendors uh, you want to work with. Um, at NewComp, part of our job is selecting technology vendors that we think bring the most value to our clients. And um, I think the same thing applies when our, our clients are selecting vendors. And a few things that we think it comes down to is picking technologies that allow you to be flexible and operate with agility. Um, tools that uh, users adopt very well is also really important, getting as many users on board as possible and also tools that you can scale your business with and they scale with you no matter what size you are. So uh, tools like Alteryx, ThoughtSpot, and Snowflake are great for that and that's why we wanted to show them today. Um, speaking of trends, you know, companies within the grocery industry have more and more data. We don't need to remind you how much data is being uh, made every day, but um, you know, it's as good a time as ever to start thinking about using that data to be competitive as the food industry evolves. Um, you know, whether that's using analytics to figure out how to decrease costs, find new streams of business, provide more value to your customers and employees. Um, and to do that, you need access to not only good data, but tools to analyze it, which is why we're showing a full stack of these technologies today. Um, so things like predictive analytics, with that, companies can look at customer preferences, anticipate demand faster, personalize promotion. Um, so we're going to be showing how you can use a mix of all these tools to have that great data and then, you know, uh, do some anal and analyze that data as well. Uh, 2021 and 2022 are going to be very different years. Uh, so we think now is a good time to start looking at an analytics strategy. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items we're going to be recording the webinar, uh, sending out the presentation slides. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, you can put them uh, in the side in the questions panel there. Uh, and any additional questions after, feel free to send them my way. And if it's anything slightly technical, it will more than likely be being forwarded to uh, Jordan. Um, and just a quick overview of NewComp before we get started. Uh, for those who don't know us, we're a dedicated analytics practice with over 25 years of experience. Uh, we have many key strategic vendor partnerships um, with Alteryx, Thoughts on Snowflake uh, being some of our very uh, key partnerships. And, um, you know, we choose, like I said, we choose partners who uh, provide value to our clients and, you know, with strategic reasons. So we think that these three in particular bring so much value to our clients, especially those in, in grocery and retail, just because um, it's where they need a modern analytics strategy. Uh, stack that's scalable, can meet the demands of skew level detail to make decisions on demand, uh, and we'll try to show that today. And so these, all these partnerships, we can advise you based on your requirements, uh, you know, if we think they'd be a good fit, and we also provide consulting services and, and training around all of them. 
And this is more just for reference in terms of the services we have, but uh, it's really everything from development. We have a great team of data engineers, data scientists, data architects, BI developers, really the whole spectrum. Um, we also do lots of advisory work, so just discussing different technology and methodology options as you take on different analytics uh, initiatives. We also do lots of roadmaps, so talking about where you are now versus where you want to be and how to get there with analytics. And we cut, we try to keep those very prescriptive and um, you know to the point and keep them short. And um, so we found a lot of success in those. And then lastly, we also have a dedicated training practice that offers formal courses or custom courses or mentoring on um, pretty well any uh, analytics technology you could uh, you could imagine. Um, so with all that in mind, I will pass it over to Jordan at this time. He's going to be giving the demo. Should be a screen there. So give you guys yeah. kind of a picture to paint. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a data analyst working kind of at a local grocery store. And I've been tasked with trying to find out how our customers shop. It's a pretty broad question, but definitely the type of questions um, I get asked in my my day-to-day -day job. So um, in our store, we track every transaction. Obviously, we have a uh, transaction table here. I'm just going to run the data in Alteryx here. So we can see we have a transaction table, date, time, you know, transaction ID, who was working, who the customer was, all kinds of information, products, line amounts, all kinds of great information. So we track every uh, transaction, as well as somebody maintains a CSV of all of our customer information. So we can see customer IDs, customer kind of first name, last name, not stored in a great field type, uh, emails, you know, all kinds of information about them as well as their loyalty cards. So we have all kinds of transactions as well as all kinds of information about a customer. We also have a table that I made of generations. So what generation they fall into, kind of baby boomers, Gen, Gen X, older and younger millennials, um, you know, Gen Z, all that kind of information. So I'm hoping in the next 30 minutes or so, or so to show you transforming these three CSVs. We can pretend this is maybe an export from a system. Like I said, a CSV that somebody maintains and uh, you know, a CSV that I made on my desktop. So I'm hoping to transform those into a table that I can explore using things like statistical analysis, such as k-means, uh, maybe create a violin plot and take a look at uh, some information. I'm also gonna try to create a cloud data warehouse and store the table that we've made inside of that. So that would be Snowflake. Uh, if you have any kind of databasing background to create a data warehouse, is uh, just a part of something in 30 minutes is is pretty uh, pretty incredible in and of itself. So to uh, to create that, store our data in that table, and then explore that data inside of ThoughtSpot and create some different reports and views and metrics that we could look at all on the fly, as well as pin those around and uh, and have a place that we could track information. So all of that hopefully by uh, in the next 30 minutes. So first, I, I brought my data in. I really just dragged these from a folder that they were uh, they were sitting in on my desktop, and they're inside of Alteryx now. Um, took a look at them. So you can see we have 50,000 records for kind of one month there, so a lot of information. One thing to highlight, all of this is stored in D-strings. In some cases, we care. In some cases, we uh, we don't care. So what I want to highlight with this is Alteryx is great at picking up data types. If I wanted to, I could sit and I could pick what a transaction ID is and, and all kinds of different information. But I can also simply drag something like an auto field tool out and run that. And what you'll see now is all of our data types change, change to something a little bit more appropriate whether it's an integer for an integer or a date for a date it's able to recognize, right? So now we can deal with those a little bit more appropriately. 
I'm also going to connect an auto field to customers since it's all in the same. But in this case, I'm going to leave out gender and birth year. I don't want to change these fields, and we'll see why shortly. So when I run that now, we can again see our metadata change. But we see that these two stayed the same. So I can leave these ones alone and leave their size alone as well. But we can see that none of my data is actually uh, changing. As well, none of my raw data is being affected. The CSVs that live on my desktop, they're not actually being affected. And if everything I do is run in memory. So I have birth date here, I have birth year, but I also just wanna calculate a really simple, um, do a simple calculation of what, how old they are in years. So just keeping it simple, I could do all kinds of uh, dynamic transformations here and show you guys fancy functions of, uh, of how I would do that. But really, all I'm going to do is type in the year we're in and use a function called toNumber to convert birth year to a number. And if I run that now, I have an age for everybody. So we can see 1950 comes back as 71. So just a really simple calculation. We could get as dynamic as we wanted to, or as we could keep it as simple as we wanted to. Now having their birth year though, I also have birth year in this generations file. And I wanna join that information together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this join tool and connect the generations file. I'm simply gonna join on that birth year and we can see Alteryx even picks it up for us. And I can probably drop this. I don't really need it twice. So I'll just keep the generation tag. And now when I run that, I can see I didn't have any customers from these, uh, these years here. So 2010 probably makes a lot of sense. All of my uh, customers did fall into a category though. And when I look at what they joined to, we can see that they now have generation tags. So now all my customers fall into a generation and I can explore them within groupings. I also said that I wanted to join all my customer information to my transactions, which would make a lot of sense, see who they actually are as opposed to just a number. So I'm gonna join that on customer ID. And again, Alteryx pre-fills that out for me. I'm gonna drop this duplicate field. We can see that it was highlighted there for me and everything else looks pretty fine. So what I can um, kind of make from this is in particular, this customer didn't shop in the data set that we have. These 25,000 records all match up to a customer. So we can now see our transaction date and time to a customer and what generation they're from, how old they were. And these transactions here did not have a customer. So maybe they didn't give their customer ID, maybe they don't have a membership with us, we just have transactions for them. Um, you know, Seeing that they're all zero probably leads me to think it's tagged to a store or something like that. So you know, we'll not look at them for this example, but you know, if you wanted to, the records are still there, right? You don't lose anything in doing that. Okay, now what I wanna do is actually sum up kind of their total spend and then calculate a score for them and figure out kind of like a, uh, a numeric value. So I'm gonna drag out a summary tool to everybody who had a customer. And I wanna summarize up some of their transactions. So. I'm gonna take the customer ID and group by. I'm also gonna take things like generation because we added that in, um, their gender, their age, we can group by that. But then I wanna sum up their line item amount. I actually wanna summarize this field and I can give it a better name, something like total spend. And if I run that now, we can see our table gets a lot smaller, turns our transactional table 
into kind of customer records. And now we can see this customer ID from this generation and that kind of information about them. So from that now, I said I wanted to calculate a score. So I would go to something like a preparation palette and drag in a formula tool. And I could create a new column called spend score. And I'm just gonna take total spend and divide it by a large number, something like 500. It should give me some sort of percentage value. And we'll store that as a proper data type, something like a double. As well, I want to calculate, or I wanna replace in the gender column, I want to replace just M with um, male, and I want to replace the letter F with female. So I'm gonna write out a really simple if statement. So I'm gonna say if gender, oops, is equal to M, then male, and I can assume just in this data set here that if it's not, everything else should match back the other way. So there we go. So now I've calculated a spend score here and I've replaced this. I actually want all this information together though. So I'm gonna join it back to my original data set. Again, we have something really simple like customer ID to join on, automatically maps for us. And we probably can get rid of the right customer ID in these duplicate fields here. We don't need them twice. AlterX highlights that for us. And we can see everything joins up and we have a really nice table here of information, right? We have loyalty card numbers, birth dates, names, email addresses, spend scores, you know, what they bought, when they bought it. So this would be great information. And what I'm gonna do is I would kick this out to Snowflake. It's a super, super simple process. Um, all we would have to do is quickly swap over to Snowflake. So here I am. Uh, this is our new comp Snowflake instance. It's a real instance. I'm just gonna log in like you would any other application. You could make this OAuth authentication, absolutely anything. Um, and all I would need to land that information into Snowflake is a warehouse and a database. So for warehouse, I'm just gonna use this demo warehouse that we already have. But if I wanted to create one, I absolutely could. And this is the super kind of interesting part about Snowflake. Um, this is how you can scale upwards and outwards with Snowflake. So you can specify a size, um, you know, if you wanted to have, let's say, just an extra small cluster, you absolutely could. You, credits, you can kind of think of as a relation to nodes. So every time you go up, you, uh, you double the amount of nodes. So this will give you way more processing power, be able to process faster, um, as well as you can set it to scale outwards. So you can set it to have, say, five, and at that 9 a.m. rush, let's say, if a bunch of people want to query this data, Snowflake will scale that data warehouse outwards. All those people query the data. And when they're done querying or when Snowflake recognizes using its algorithms that those queries are slowing down, it'll actually start spinning down those clusters until it can sustain back to one. So super interesting concept. This is that concept of scaling upwards as well as outwards. Um, another super cool concept is the auto suspend. So this is what we were saying after, let's say 10 minutes, um, if nobody queries this warehouse, it will go into suspended. And you can see all of our uh, data warehouses are suspended right now. So what that means is I'm not paying for any compute. Um, our timer on compute is completely off. We're only paying to store data, which is incredibly cheap at this point. Um, so super cool if, uh, you know, after hours, nobody's, uh, nobody's querying data, those warehouses will just turn off and, and nobody's paying for compute on them. If somebody queries them, you can use this auto resume button 
the warehouse will spin back up. And if another query doesn't come to it in 10 minutes, it'll spin back down. So very interesting concept. In terms of a database, I already created one in this case for grocery demo, but again, as simple as just giving it a name. Inside of that, I did preload our data into this thought spot table. So just to see, there is our table inside of there. So now that we kind of understand how that would happen, I can show you what I would need to configure inside of Snowflake. I would simply use this ODBC connector and pre-populate that information. So this is everything we talked about. I'd put my password in, um, what database I'm using. So that was the one I showed you there. What schema I'm using. Again, just creating a schema. Our demo warehouse, my role, which was found in the top right-hand corner, and which level of tracing. I just gave it a name, and uh, Alteryx can communicate with ThoughtSpot, and it populates that table. I don't have to specify columns or anything like that. So very fast process. I just don't want to overwrite my table that already has our data in there. So I also said, using these inf this information, I want to um, plot things like a violin or a k-means, which sound very mathematical and very uh, tricky to do. But using Alteryx, they're, uh, they're quite simple. So I'm just going to search for violin, and we can see it right there, and drag it onto my canvas, connecting it to my data. It asks me which field I want to plot. I want to plot total spend, and I can plot this by a group. So let's just say gender to keep it into kind of smaller categories, but I could also plot by generation or any other categorical variable. And I'm going to add a browse tool. So a little bit small there, probably on everybody's screen, but what it tells us is, um, you know, you can see there's a very high tail on spending, uh, total spend when it comes to female. So the uh, the distribution is clearly much larger. It looks like the uh, width of it is very similar though. So you could draw your conclusions. Seems like a larger tail to me, but might also be because it's uh, sample data. <laughs> and then to do something like a k-means, which is again, a very complicated kind of data science approach. I'm gonna break it down in just doing a k-means cluster analysis. So Alteryx has these kinds of tools pre-built in, which makes it very, very simple to do. Um, maybe I wanted to, nope, sorry. I just noticed that age here is stored as a string, should be a um, numeric value. So I can go back here and I can convert that to a double which will populate all the way back into my gaming stool. So pretty dynamic. Um, I'm gonna use age, total spend, and spend score on my k-means. So just three um, fields. And what that's gonna do is kind of plot their, uh, their vector differences. You can think of it that way. Um, I'm gonna put them into, let's say three clusters, just for example. I could also standardize fields and use different clustering methods. Given I said I'd do this in 30 minutes, we won't dive super deep into k-means versus neural gas clus clustering methods, but lots of information out there if you wanted to. Um, you know, lots of Wikipedia articles. It's just differences in algorithms, really, and different ways of, uh, of approaching it. So, but if you have a preference of one over another for a particular problem, you absolutely could do that. Um, I'm gonna plot both centroids endpoints in this case, just to show you what they mean. And I don't really need to change anything about the graphic, but if I wanted to output this, I absolutely could change things about the graphics there. I'm gonna shortcut add some browse tools as well. And I'll quickly let this run through. And what we get on one side is a report. So you can see these blue numbers here are our clusters where all these little ones are the individual people. So we can see that age 
is uh, one principal component kind of coming down this way. Seems like obviously total spend and spend score are going to be a very similar uh, measure with the group one being pulled towards that way and group two deferring from both of them. So it looks like we have an age kind of a spending and a, a difference of that component. Um, so, you know, we could draw what conclusions we wanted from that. As well, we could append that back to our information. So we could append oops, those groups back to our information. So we can see this has kind of weird information in it, but it's actually our object. So we would want to feed that to one side and our original data to the other. There is no configuration for it here. And that'll be our last output. Okay. And now we can see customer IDs, their spend score, um, you know, their total spend, as well as what cluster they belong to. So maybe we wanted to treat clusters differently. Maybe we wanted to take a look at how uh, different clusters interact with each other, all those types of things. We absolutely could kind of draw that mathematical conclusion now we have time right so pretending i did kick this information up to snowflake i promise i did i'm going to transition kind of back there now just so we can see it in snowflake so there's our same information now in a much more uh, modern kind of concept right they're not csvs living on my desk anymore we have um, data types you know we have schemas, all of those types of good things. To show how easy it is to uh, to run that data warehouse that wasn't on, I'm going to quickly turn it on here. I said it was under grocery and there's our table and I'm just going to select star from it. So select all the information from it. That warehouse will turn on and you can see it go green and there we go. We can now see that exact same information in Snowflake. So this really is in the in the cloud, right? This lives in Snowflake. This isn't um, you know, anything of a trick. Um, but there it is in Snowflake. We could do any kind of SQL uh, transformations, any kind of thing like that we wanted. We could connect to this information using Snow SQL. We could run stored procs on it now. Um, anything like that. It is, you know, true modernized data now. Um, everything's in a data type. We could compare dates, transactions, track people, all kinds of things. So with that now, I want to visualize this data. Looking at it at the table level is great and understanding that's fantastic, but to draw real conclusions, I want to visualize that. So I am going to log into ThoughtSpot. This is my ThoughtSpot instance. Again, super simple to sign in. I'm just entering a username and password and it's gonna take me to my home page. So again, I have pre-connected to this data, but I wanna show you how easy it is to connect. We can see this is my instance here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to data at the top and connections. I already clearly have my snowflake, but I'm gonna add a connection and this is how simple it is. So, you know, this would be my new connection. I could describe it if I wanted to. I would simply click on Snowflake and click continue. And it's gonna ask me for information here. If you had no idea where to find your account name, it's gonna tell you what it's looking for as information here. You know, your username is at the top. Your role is being shown here. The data warehouse you're using is being shown here. You can specify a database or not. So extremely easy. At this point, I'm just going to click cancel because I already have mine. And you can see, you can use service or OAuth. So here is my data now inside of ThoughtSpot. Um, we can see held all of our data types, what it is, whether it's a measure or an attribute, what kind of aggregations. Um, very great information. I could join it to other data if I had other data connections. I can take a look at sample data. So if I wanted to view it inside of here, it's just going to quickly load. 
a few rows for me and I could explore that same data we've been talking about, as well as where that data is being used. So you can see I've clearly used it in a few places before, but. So with all that being said, my data is now in ThoughtSpot. I wanna ask it questions. I wanna know more. I can simply click on this search button. Just to show you what's in the data, I could click around in here, but I think what really highlights it the best is just typing. So I think a really, um, you know, kind of simple metric that I would look at would maybe be something like total spend. And you can see ThoughtSpot's filling it out for me as I, as I type. We said by generation, ThoughtSpot's already pre saying like, this is probably a pretty good keyword um, that you would like. Um, you know, I've been typing in here a bit, so it's done some machine learning and actually learned what I might be looking for and how I type. And that'll transfer between, you know, users or if you're part of different groups, all those, um, all those types of really interesting features. So again, I'm gonna click by generation and I'm gonna click go. And what that does is it already produces a graph for me. I could see different total spends by those generations. And if I wanted to do something really cool like drill down, I could just right click on it and click on drill down. And it'll ask me what I want to drill down by. Maybe I wanted to know all my Gen X's customer emails. And I could convert that back to a table. And I could even do something as simple as sort descending if I wanted to, right? So now what I'm seeing is I'm the ability to drill into my top spending Gen X's. Okay, that's great, but maybe I wanna know a little bit more. So I'm gonna just get rid of these kind of keywords here at the top. And I wanna see total spend by generation by, let's say, transaction time. That's a great one. And I'm gonna click go. I'm gonna change this back to a graph here. And we can see it's pretty crazy and it's also a pretty wide graph, right? I have a lot of transaction times. Thankfully, ThoughtSpot's smart enough to say, hey, like we, we can see you have a lot of transaction time there. Oh. Google Sheet froze on me, sorry. Type that in again. So total spend by generation, by transaction time. I don't have to type anything again. <laughs> we can see it produces that. And I can click on this here and I can actually time bucket this hourly. It realizes that there's probably uh, pretty good demarcation points in there. So I'm gonna click hourly on this. And hey, that looks like a much more usable graph. I have, you know, highlighting baby boomers, Gen X, older millennials when they came in. You can see I actually get two spikes when it comes to Gen X. If I were to filter everything else out, right? Get a spike here as well as a spike here, right? 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So, you know, maybe before work and just uh, just heading home after, right? Maybe uh, maybe we offer a coffee special or something at 4 and get more people in, right? It seems like here seems to be our lull and towards 8 o'clock of closing, um, that's when things start going uh, further down. So maybe I really like this graph. I think it's super interesting. And again, I can still do all those drills, all that underlying data stuff that we uh, we talked about. I'm gonna give this a name, maybe a, a better name than total, total spend. Maybe something like uh, customer hourly spend by generation. I could play with this all day. I can change all the colors I wanted on here. Uh, there's all kinds of settings in here. I could have data markers on there. Um, I actually really like the data markers in this case, but 
Um, you know, I could put labels on anything you can kind of think of. The sky's the limit, but just to show it how simple it is, I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to pin it. I'm going to create a new pin board and just call it, uh, I don't know, customer views or something like that and add it to that pin board. And you can see I have a new pin board called customer views. So maybe I wanted to add a few other things onto there. Maybe I wanted to delete this hourly and just leave it by generation how we saw it before. Oops. By generation, sorry. Oh, try that again. I think it's holding on to a filter there. Let's say total spend by generation. There we go. So perfect. Maybe I wanted to add this too. I could give it a better name as well. Total spend by generation. And I could pin that to my customer views as well. Now you can see I have pin boards at the top. And if I were to go into there, I have a couple different graphs here. And I could mess with them. Maybe I wanted to view them kind of bigger. You know, this one a bit smaller or something like that. You know, I absolutely could. I could set them smaller side by side. You know, however I wanted to play with and adjust these, I could. I simply can save my changes there. So this has a live connection to my Tableau dashboard. You know, the data refreshes. We can refresh it here. The other thing I really wanted to highlight, which I found interesting, was this spot IQ. So a little bit of a, of a different approach. Um, I ran spot IQ against the data, telling it kind of, you know, take an in-depth analysis of total spend by generation, like we were talking about, and statistically tell me what you find as outliers. I gave it no other information than that. This is my original query. And Spot IQ actually went through and found 26 different insights about that. So it found kind of who my top customers are um, by total line item amount and customer name. And I could say whether this is useful to me or not. And it'll actually learn from that as to what I find useful. And that, that can be custom, like I was saying to you or to your group or to your organization, right? Just because I don't find it useful or I do find it useful, it doesn't have to influence what other people find useful. So again, it just went through and it found a whole bunch of different insights. And if I wanted to, you notice, I could pin these to a pin board. So say I found total order by customer ID to be very interesting. I could also add that to my customer view. And when I go to that pin board, you know, you would also see that. <laughs> well, you would normally see that there. Um, so I went ahead and went to and built out kind of just like a little sample pin board like I would think of taking a view at. Again, I when I think of uh, ThoughtSpot and taking a look at kind of their their design. I don't think of, of, you know, necessarily dashboarding. I think it's really a much more interesting concept than that of like data exploration and using these as metrics that you're looking at, right? Maybe you had total spend and you wanted to view it monthly. You could absolutely then edit this and, and set those different, um, those different views up for yourself. So, we can see I have my spend by generation here, breaking down my different spend with the ability to drill down. I have my spending times by generation, the graph we were looking there. I calculated an average spend score by generation using my spend score. So we can see it's fairly, uh, fairly uniform, but different outliers in different places. And I also did an average spend score by age. So we can see there's kind of a 30, 54, 71 kind of being 
maybe outliers of uh, of age populations, right? Maybe something um, we should look at, right? What are they buying? And we could definitely drill down into that information, right? And get it, get those um, those underlying bits of information and take other views of that using what we learn from visualizing here, right? So you could create as many pin boards as you like about different things you learn and, and different views as you go through them. So I realize I'm. I, it took me 32 minutes, but I think we can uh, we can all agree in 32 minutes if we stop the clock now. I was able to take some CSVs that lived in, you know, not great data types, all V strings, convert those, um, change data types, run some calculations, summarize data calculate a spending score, do k-means analysis, plot violin graphs, um, send that data to Snowflake, which is a modern data warehouse, create that warehouse that it is stored in. We can see demo warehouse uh, loaded everything for us, right? There's our database living in the cloud. Um, it's, it's up there now. Um, Snowflake's job to look after it, not mine anymore. And then built some pin boards off of that to actually visualize and take a view into our information. Um, you know, I, I work with Tableau and, and Power BI. I definitely couldn't uh, couldn't quite maybe uh, <laughs> demo a pin board as fast as as this. Very very interesting. So this is just, in my opinion, a, a fantastic group of technology stack that you can really convert some simple simple data processes into really valuable visualizations into your data. So I hope that was useful. I'm going to turn the uh, turn the floor back over to Quentin there. Uh, I hope that inspires and kind of gets you you thinking about, you know, what you could do with possibly some of the data that you explore today and how quickly you can get these stood up and and you know, working with your data. Yeah, so in terms of next steps um you know really at this point if you're interested in exploring any of these technologies we're always happy to chat see if it makes sense with your current ecosystem and what you're trying to do so uh, we just wanted to highlight our office hours on this slide which is really a just a great way to um, you know chat with some of our experts or if you want to go deeper on any of these technologies whether it's us demoing live to you or trying something with your own data um, you know, we're able to do that. And all of these different technologies have, um, have trial programs. And, uh, you know, one thing that we like, especially about this technology stack is just how quickly you can get value, uh, out of, out of the tool. So we can solve some really interesting use cases within that trial period, which is, uh, something we love doing. So, uh, if you're interested in trying any of these, out uh, or you're already using them and are just looking for a little more help or support you know we're able to do that and um, feel free to reach out to me we'll be following up um or reach out to your account manager and uh, and we can help out i uh i didn't see any questions of, uh, throughout the presentation but if there is anything that you wanted to know feel free to reach out to me uh, i'll answer what i can or um or pass it on to jordan to help out but uh, we're happy to answer any questions you have um, and yeah, we can give everyone 15 minutes back in their day. So really appreciate everyone joining and hope that everyone has a great day. Thank you.